This is a Podco original. I love being followed. I know a lot of people don't, but I love being followed. So just hit that follow button right there. That's right. And uh, the story I'm told is that they came to my parents and said they want him to say this this line that's kind of provocative. Um, and and I guess my mom said she she took a couple days. She's like, this is kind of crazy. I don't know. Is it good? Is it bad? And she thought that's going right. to be the line that that everyone remembers. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, now I'll forever be known as the boys have a penis, girls have a <laughs> vagina kid. <laughs> it's funny. I never really thought I was going to be like this horror guy. Uh, but I think Pet Cemetery and Wes Craven's New Nightmare have uh, there, there's a big fan base of following in the, yeah. in the horror scene. Oh, horror! People, so now yeah. I kind of go to horror cons and and oh, do you? Yeah, yeah I've, I've I've got like a, a a horror following, I guess. I don't think I have played many other characters like that that I can think of off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed kind of playing in that space, the uniqueness of that. You did it well. You know, you always put yourself in your roles to some degree. Uh, depending on what it is, more or less. But I always felt like Aaron was me turned up to 11. <laughs> like, <laughs> How did you get into beekeeping? I saw a documentary. I think my parents were watching at home one day when the TV was on. And I just thought, that is fascinating. They are so cool. That would be a cool pet. <laughs> and then they're like, yeah, you want bees. Next thing you know, it'll be whatever, you know, something else. And I was like, no, I want bees. I want bees. And then I got a book on bees. And I'm like, I love bees. I just kept bugging them for like a year and they're like, fine, get them a beehive. Welcome to season two, episode six of Full House Rewind. I'm your host, Dave Coulier, and our guest today is none other than Miko Hughes. He's a director, writer, and actor, and I think he's been an actor almost his entire life. He's appeared in the movies Pet Cemetery, Kindergarten Cop, Apollo 13, and Wes Craven's New Nightmare, just to name a few. He's appeared on television in Hanging with Mr. Cooper, The Nanny, and Beverly Hills 90210. I'm exhausted just reading this. Full House fans, you know him as the character Aaron. Here's a pic of Miko when Full House was on the air. Oh, look at that adorable kid. Hey, Miko. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for being it here. It is so cool to see you again. It's been so many it years. Is. I really appreciate you having me. Oh, was... and, and likewise. Thank you. I have a ton of questions for you. Sure. But before we do that, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about episode five of season two, also known as Joey Gets Tough. Yes. Yeah. So my character apparently got tough in this episode. <laughs> uh, it was directed by our show's creator, Jeff Franklin. And it first aired on ABC on November 25th, 1988. So, uh, Miko, can you just read that little uh, little brief description of what this episode's about? Sure. Joey upsets DJ when he punishes her. Meanwhile, Jesse appears on Danny's show but gets upset when Danny upstages him. Oh, pulls you right in, doesn't it? Yeah. Man, I'm telling you, if I'm snooping around, you know, <laughs> looking for something to watch, I read that. I'm watching Let's it. go. Okay, here we go. <laughs> well, you and I, we're going to describe what's happening on the episode together. I'm going to start us off. Season two, episode six, opens with a teaser in Jesse's room. Jesse and Michelle are lifting weights together. The scene closes with Jesse holding Michelle and flying her around the room like super baby. <laughs> <laughs> the show opens in the kitchen where Danny and the girls are eating the dinner that Joey has served. Jesse enters and announces that he and his band will be playing at Slim's for the weekend. Jesse tells everyone that he needs to find a way to fill up the club. Hmm, okay. Uh, Danny suggests that Jesse play on Wake Up San Francisco on Friday morning, but they'll have to audition for the show's producer first. Jesse invites Danny to come to a rehearsal and pick a song for the audition. Before he exits, he tells the girls that Joey is in charge. Then Joey exits to give Michelle a bath. Hmm. DJ and Stephanie start <laughs> scheming to take advantage of Joey while Danny's out for the nights. DJ and Steph ask Joey if they can watch Tiffany live from Tokyo, Ooh. but Joey insists that it's a school night and the program airs way too late. They try to convince him by doing the double bunny nose, and <laughs> Joey caves. Well, of course, you always cave doing the double bunny nose. <laughs> uh, later that night in the living room, Joey, DJ, and Steph are watching Tiffany on TV, and dancing to the music. Well, just then, Danny arrives back home. 
After the girls go to bed, Danny tells Joey that the girls took advantage of him. Joey tells Danny that he'll be much tougher in the future. Well, meanwhile, on the set of Wake Up San Francisco, <laughs> Jesse and his band are auditioning for the show's producer, who suggests that Danny do a number with the band on the next show. Hmm. We go back to the house, and Joey is on the phone speaking with Kimmy Gibbler's mom, asking if she's seen DJ, and, well, Joey feels pretty worried. DJ arrives, and Joey tells her that she's an hour late. She tells Joey that she was with her friends. Joey then grounds DJ for the weekend, and she'll have to miss her karate tournament. Oh, man. Tough. DJ, it is tough. <laughs> DJ resists and tells Joey that he can't tell her what to do because he's not her father. It's the next morning, and Joey's <laughs> trying to feed Michelle in the kitchen. Jesse enters and reminds them uh, to watch him on Danny's TV show. Joey asks Jesse if he's seen DJ. Jesse tells Joey that DJ's upset with him. Joey then tries to go upstairs to let DJ off the hook, but Jesse intercedes and tells him to stick to his guns. Jesse gives Michelle a big kiss and exits. Aw. DJ quickly enters the kitchen and exits for school. Stephanie tells Joey that she loves him no matter how much he tries to punish DJ. <laughs> we cut to the TV studio where Danny is finishing an interview with the pageant winner, Miss... Kadota Fig? Miss Kadota Fig. Miss yes. Kadota Fig. Yeah, everybody the knows Miss Kadota Fig. Fig. Yeah. Jesse's band is about to start. The producer of Wake Up San Francisco urges Danny to sing with the band. Jesse whips into a supercharged version of Proud Mary. Oh, he, keep on rolling. He yeah. finishes by doing the splits. A completely upstages <laughs> Jesse and the Rippers. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, we cut back to the house where the family is having a meeting in the living room. Stephanie explains that whoever is holding the talking stick may speak. As they pass the talking stick, it becomes more clear that Joey was justified in grounding DJ. Joey reveals to everyone that being tough is not in his nature. Jesse says that even Herman Munster yelled at poor little Eddie <laughs> once in a while. Hey, I know him. <laughs> Danny reminds Joey that he did the right thing and DJ deserved to be punished. DJ exits and Joey follows her upstairs. Is that Butch Patrick? I actually I know Butch Patrick and uh, Fred Gwynn who played Herman oh, Munster. Man, yeah. I wish. Well, I don't remember I much. Wish. But, All right, yeah. we got to get Sorry. back to yeah, the yeah. show. Tangent. Doggone it! <laughs> All right, we cut back to the girls' room where Joey begins a conversation with DJ about the day she was born, and that her parents wanted to name her Farah. Hmm. <laughs> Joey insists that he talked them out of it, and by doing so, did her a huge favor. Well, Joey tells DJ that they've always been great buddies. He thought that living together would bring them even closer. But now that he's like a parent, that kind of changes things. Mm -hmm, certainly does. Joey tells DJ that uh, he was scared to death when he didn't know where she was the previous night. Well, DJ apologizes for being mad and for saying mean things. They tell each other how much they love each other and embrace with a hug. Joey tells DJ that he's new at the discipline thing and the grounding her for the weekend was a little unfair and will allow her to go to the karate tournament. DJ insists that Joey will be a great dad someday. Aww. They finish, to go. <laughs> yeah, they, they finish by playfully doing some karate moves on each other. And that, folks, is what happens in the episode Joey gets tough. Thank you, Miko, for helping me out with that. Thank you. Uh, anything come to mind as you read through that? Anything uh, Anything pop into your head? Uh, I remember ooh. karate. We had like some karate situation. We we're like the... I was, I'm not sure. Was it the same episode where we were all fighting? We all had like headbands. Could we were been. jumping on the beds. Could have been. That was a fun one. We were like superheroes, but we were taking karate. Could have been. Yeah. Could have been. I'm I was so little. I, you know, it's kind of a, a blur. I went back knowing I was going to get to see you today. <laughs> I went, I went and watched a bunch of clips and it was, it was so enjoyable because normally I don't like watching myself, mm -hmm. but it was like with fresh eyes. I hadn't seen it in so long. Yeah. I was cracking up that it, it was, I was able to watch it like removed. Like it wasn't Yeah, that's me. great. And it was, it was so cool. And, and it was such a wholesome show. You don't see that right. so much anymore yeah. if you do it's just different the show was so epitome the epitome of the 90s you know it was yeah it, it doesn't 
it was a work family for other shows that tried to do it. I mean, there was a few that had that '90s vibe, but at least for me, maybe I'm biased because I got to be with you guys on it. But it it just really epitomizes. Well, the those 90s are TV. those are great words to sum up uh, Full House because I think a lot of people feel the same way. Um, yeah. I mean, and uh, segueing into you know you being very young when you were there, uh, you started your acting career at 22 months old. Somebody yeah. told me. Yeah, and you. You did a commercial. Yeah. <laughs> like you're not even two yet and you're sure. doing you did a commercial and then at twenty seven months old you appeared in Pet Cemetery. Yeah. Which is a that's a big movie. I got that's, some experience. I think I was ready for yeah. a feature. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, five months paid of my dues. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those five months get yeah. you to over two years old. Cram. It was cramming. Uh, do you remember back to that time and how did that happen? Yeah, it's it's strange. Uh you know, I didn't know anything else than acting growing up. So it took me, you know, I knew I was very fortunate uh, as I grew up, but it, it took a long time to really get a, a full perspective and, and the gravity of yeah. <laughs> what was happening. Um, sure. It just felt normal. It didn't feel like any anything that different, you know. Well, and, you know, you did uh, 12 episodes of Full House, yeah. all from uh, season three through season eight, I, yeah. I believe. I think I was um, like... Almost like three to three or four to nine. Yeah, years it old was. Over yeah, the years. yeah. I mean, we got to see you from being just a little guy. Yeah. To all of a sudden, you're like, oh, this. There's a kid walking around. Yeah, you can see the whole family grow. Y up. Yeah, it's, right. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, do Do you remember much about working on our show, and and what the environment was like yeah, for you? Yeah, I, I remember. Uh, it. I think I had my experience had been a lot more in like commercials and film and movie of the week kind of things. Yeah. Uh, it was the most stage like because of the, the three camera and the live studio audi audience, right. there's that immediate feedback of the crowd. Yeah. And I think that was, that was really fun and that was really unique. Had and you I ever like, experienced that before? A I think I guest starred like a little bit on some other ones, but I think full house was the start, you know, yeah. uh, from there, I think hanging with Mr. Cooper and the nanny and, and a little bit here and there. Um, but that that was that was a new experience, and and that was that was really cool. Because on Friday nights, when that studio audience the came energy in, just that, changes. You that practice was, all week, you think it's working, yeah. And, and then, then Friday, Friday you get a new hits. timing because yeah. actual people are laughing. It's not just writers and producers and you know the crew laughing. Now you've got yeah. two hundred and some people, and it does change your timing. I mean, you've got to kind of it's wait funny, for the laughs. Kind of bringing it back. Yeah. 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 yeah you you got to wait for the laughs. It's a different timing thing, but you nailed it, you know, which is incredible that a kid can come in into that environment uh, and just kind of just boom, you. there you Thanks, were, man. Yeah, yeah. You were a pro. Yeah. It was, it was amazing, amazing to, to watch. Yeah. Who, who do you think was your favorite on uh, on Full House? <laughs> Did you have um, a favorite? I mean, if you can remember back then. Or... Every, I mean, besides you, everyone was pretty cool. Like, <laughs> I'm just we kidding. had our beef. But... I don't mean to lead the witness here. <laughs> no, you were here. great, no. man. Yeah. Yeah. Was... I remember Mr. Woodchuck. We're all sitting on the stumps. Yep. That was a good time. And you were making us crack up in between takes, too. You had them going. Well, you know, whenever we were kind of having a down moment, uh, either me or Saget would start goofing around. Yeah. And, and we we love doing that because it kept the crew up, you know, and the crew people always said, oh man, thank goodness you guys are here because this was it's a the tough, energy. Yeah. It was a tough day. It goes a long way. <laughs> I was sure. like, you know, what else are you going to do? We're si you're sitting yeah. around with two comedians and we're just going to keep goofing around. You're going to do what you got to um, do. Yeah. You've done some big, big movies. Uh, I've Kindergarten lucky, Cop with bit. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, can you take us back to that experience? Oh man, um, I think I was the youngest one in the classroom on Kindergarten Cop. They, the stories that I'm told, you know, from my parents, uh, they didn't have a line for me. I didn't have uh -huh. lines written. Yeah, and they had us all. Some of it was kind of written as as developed on set. Um, and, and you guys improvised your way through scenes. And yeah, stuff? yeah, yeah. It was a lot of yes anding and. Oh you know. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think they just kind of got a feel for for Arnold and the kids and the dynamic and and you know who who and what and where and how they wanted to do everything. And uh, the story I'm told is that they came to my parents and said they want him to say this this line that's kind of provocative. Um, and and I guess my mom said she she took a couple days. She's like, this is 
kind of crazy. I don't know. Is it good? Is it bad? And she thought that's going to be the line that, that everyone remembers <laughs> right. and, uh, and went for it. And, and yeah, now I'll forever be known as the boys have a penis, girls have a <laughs> vagina kid. <laughs> What, how was Arnold? Was Arnold? Arnold. Did, you, did did you get to work with Arnold? He was fantastic. He was he was very kind. He's good with the kids. The kids. And, yeah, absolutely. Because uh, he was a huge star. Yeah, that, you know. Yeah. I mean, he's still a huge star. But sure. I mean, he will yeah. always be a huge star. But absolutely. right then, he was kind of hitting his groove of, you know. Uh, I mean, this was a comedy. It was kind of his, as far as I know, because I'm not too savvy with the timeline. But he was you know, Mr. Serious action star. And yeah. this was kind of a character break, kind of fish out of water situation for him. It was, him, it was a big which, departure. Which was great. It, it seemed to do very yeah. well for him. Oh, it was him great. That. Yeah. It, it was absolutely great. Uh, you also worked with a uh, longtime friend, Tom Hanks in Apollo yeah, 13. That's right. Um, yeah. You were a little older then though, right? Yeah. In Apollo 13. Yeah. How was that? It was... Um, you played was Jim fun. Lovell's son? I played son? his son. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. have... I'm in it a little bit, mostly in the family scenes, but Tom and I have one kind of one-on-one -on -one yeah. kind of emotional scene. Um, yeah, it was fun. I remember it being very, uh, it was a serious scene and, and I wasn't on set as much on that one as some of the others. So I've, it was kind of intense. It yeah. was kind of like, we're there to do this. Right. And then, uh, uh, and it was, uh, I kind of felt the gravity of it at the time. Yeah. Um, but it was a that's a, kind of a space experience. reference. Yeah, hey, gravity. You got it. <laughs> See what you did there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you've also acted in some pretty dark movies. Sure. Uh, Wes Craven's n New Nightmare. Is it is it tough to switch from you know going from a comedy to that dark kind of horror film yeah. genre for I you? Think not necessarily. I think. Uh, because you're on a set. The comedy that but, I've I've done, I've been fortunate enough to have the jokes written for me. Yeah. So I think comedy would be can be very hard. Um uh I it's funny, I never really thought I was gonna be like this horror guy. Uh but I think Pet Cemetery and Wes Craven's New Nightmare have uh, there there's a big fan base of following in the, yeah. in the horror scene. Oh, horror people, so now yeah. I'm I kinda go to horror cons and, and Oh do you? Yeah, yeah. I've 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 got like a, a, a a horror following, I guess. Um, it's it's different in some ways, but not really. I mean, the work is the work. It's still, you know, it's it's everyone standing around, smoking cigarettes, eating donuts, pulling cable in between the takes. Not really, you kids yeah. at home. Not really. I mean, <laughs> movie the, magic. They're movie eating magic. health food. And well, salad. I mean, this was the yeah. '90s. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, probably not. But yeah, people are people are working. It's a work environment. It's not actually a haunted house, right? Or right. that kind of thing. So there's certain maybe scenes or moments where you're you're geared to, you know, have that particular moment. But the day to day is is fun. It's you right. know, you're working with everybody twelve hours or more a day. You you have to get along. It's like family, yeah. really. So do you have a preference, comedy or uh, dramas? Uh, I just, I like to movies or TV. Sure, or, no, they're yeah. all great for their own thing. I just like to work, and I think if it's if it's a good fit, I've done projects where I felt like it was fine, but maybe I wasn't connecting with the character as much as. Other things, if I feel like it's a really good fit, that mm -hmm, sure. I think is more important to me than the type of you know genre or medium or whatever. Do you have a favorite character that you've done? Oh, man, you know, Aaron is pretty fun because <laughs> I was... This is a full house. I want to curse. But Aaron would, and I'm not going <laughs> to. It's okay. Uh, he was, he was we can beep you. He was a smart aleck. He yeah. was a, he's a pain in the ass. Like, yeah, he was the he was. jerk. I mean... He's one of the rougher characters in the, the Full House he was. verse. Um, well, and and I, I think that was fun to play the heel. You and know? I think because it went so against type of what the show was is why you came back 11 times. I'm very thankful for that. You know? Yeah, it, you it know? worked. Yeah, yeah, it does it work. Fun. You know? And I, I don't think I have played many other characters like that that I can think of off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed kind of playing in that space, the uniqueness of that. You did it well. Yeah. You did it well. I it's mean, I funny. Can... I kind of look back and wonder is... I was, you know, you always put yourself in your roles to some degree, uh, depending on what it is, more or less. But I always felt like Aaron was me turned up to 11. <laughs> like, I don't think I was a brat, but I, I do think there was a time where I wasn't a bad kid, but there was a time where I was a brat. That's a better way to put it. 
And I, I thankfully got, you know, some, some hard lessons and got that <laughs> kicked out of me, I yeah. think, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but, but that little snarkiness, I, I always kind of like to think Aaron's in there a little bit, you know? Yeah. Did, um, what was that like going to like movie premieres and stuff? Did you go with, you know, did you go with parents? Did you go with agents, managers? Do you remember going yeah, to those Yeah, my parents were had always, always really, really there. And, and you know, I, I have, especially my mom, I have her to thank for a lot, everything really. Your mom was on our full house set every yeah. day. Every day yeah. you were there. I'll yeah. tell her you said hello. Yeah, she does tell her as well, I said hi. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I would have agents and managers, you know, at any given time and, and, um, yeah, it, it was kind of a surreal thing to be going to, would you uh, like sit next to Arnold at the premiere or I Tom Hanks picture. at this premiere? I don't know what it's from, but I have a picture of us at some event and it's me and the twins with my arm around them. And I think it was at some screening or something and like, Mary Kate and yeah, Ashley. Mary Ka Kate yeah, Mary Kate and Ashley, and <laughs> you know, I can't top that. I was like, look at that! I was killing it at like <laughs> seven. You know, <laughs> that, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, you and I share something. You do a lot of voices, and you've done a lot of voices in animation, yeah, a little bit, which yeah. is something I I love to uh, to do. You worked with my buddy Louie Anderson. Yes, life on, with Louie. Uh, life with Louie. Right. Um, did you ever get to record with Louie in the in the yeah, studio? Yeah, he he was so kind. He was always so cool, and he had me and the family. He was performing in Vegas. We got to go see him in Vegas and go backstage and met Carrot Top and and <laughs> dude, Louis Lou Louis was fantastic and that show was great too. I feel like that uh, was a good show in a weird way. Uh, it was like the proto Meg of of Family Guy. <laughs> it was Louis's little brother that just always got you know the, uh, the rough did it end sound of like stick. this when he saw you? Hey, nice to see you, me. Totally, yeah. Good to see you. It was like a fun show. You having fun on this show? That's <laughs> a good one. Yeah. Did you work you work with Dave Coulier, right? Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. he's nice. Yeah. yeah. He's a good guy. I see him at the clubs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh what's what's like the what do you think is like the, the craziest voice you've ever done? Have you ever done any like outrageous oh, wacky ones? stuff? Because um, cartoons, you know, you can be anything, you know? Yeah. I had a director one time say to me, Okay, because back when I first started doing animation uh, voices. The first show I worked on was Scooby Doo. That's how far back I go. So, That's awesome. So I remember then you used to be able to just do a ton of voices, and before there was like a limit, you know, for, uh, for voiceover. Yeah. Uh, and I remember a director saying to me, "Okay, you're going to be the uh, the socks that fly out of the drawer. You're going to be the dog that flies backwards, <laughs> and you're going to be the mailman whose head explodes." It's just the whole universe. Is, <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh, that sounds fun. Nice. But that's, how, you know, that's animation. You know, you get to be these crazy characters. Yeah, it's the best. You can... Did you ever have like a crazy one that you got to do? <sighs> Man, the one that comes to mind, uh, it, it wasn't necessarily the most wild voice, but uh, it, was a, it was called a, a Christmas Story. I might be forgetting the exact title off the top of my head, but it was an animation. I think it had like... Betty White and and all these names I'm they're escaping me at the moment of like legends that I yeah. was fortunate enough to work with, and it plays every Christmas. It's from the '90s. It's like this wholesome story, uh, the story of Santa Claus. Story of Santa. Claus. I think that's what it's called. Huh. Yeah, Betty yeah. And White. I played a little elf. I was like Santa's number one little <laughs> elf. And yeah, that was fun. Uh, somebody. Uh, in our giant staff, we have, a, you know, you can see this. It's quite a well-oiled machine. You it's have a well-oiled yeah. machine. Machine it is, you know, when you look at the hundreds of people we have on this crew and our staff. I know. It goes on forever, wow. right? Isn't it crazy? There's the walk from the parking lot. Thank, thank you for the golf cart. That, yes. That golf cart, needed. limo, uh, yeah. jet if you need it. You know, if you need to borrow the Full House Rewind jet. Beautiful. Uh, later. Just cool. take it, yeah. take it. Like keys are on the the dish over there. Yes, Sweet. just use it. Have fun. Good looking out. Um, uh, doing donuts in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Someone is it a Boeing? Me, it, should, uh, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, well, we'll talk. Okay. We, we don't want to. We don't want to. You know, do uh, product placement. Yeah, sure, yeah. Especially with jet companies because yeah, that's yeah. important. <laughs> Somebody told me you're a beekeeper. Is yeah. that true? Yeah. You got to tell me about that because I'm fascinated. What was the movie about bees? Uh, oh, the was it The Secret few. Life of Bees or something? I think so. Was that the documentary? I think so. There's one on yeah. Netflix that's really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm fascinated with bees because Same. they're so important 
in to the, the ecosystem. ecosystem. Yeah, totally. it's amazing. Absolutely. How did you get into beekeeping? I saw a documentary. I think my parents were watching at home one day when the TV was on, and I just thought that is fascinating. They are so cool. That would be a cool pet. I just wanted to stand out and be edgy. Like, I don't want a dog or a cat. I want bees. And then they're like, yeah, you want bees. Next thing you know, it'll be whatever, you know, something else. And I was like, no, I want bees. I want bees. And then I got a book on bees. And I'm like, I love bees. And I just kept bugging them for like a year. And they're like, fine, get them a beehive. Do you keep the honey? Yeah. It's, you know, I don't do it as regularly now. I did yeah. for many years when I, I lived outside of the city. It's a little harder yeah. in LA now, um, but I still <laughs> have the passion for it. My brother was keeping bees for a while. I kind of got him into it and they're pretty self-sufficient. You can get the honey. You just kind of check on them, make sure they're good for the winter. If you're near a park or an orchard, they get the nectar, they make the honey, they pollinate the trees. It's like just a good thing for the ecosystem. You're a good man, Charlie Brown, supporting <laughs> our ecosystem like that. Sure, I, I, uh, I'm so happy that you're here. Uh, I'm so happy that you're doing well and uh, you Thanks, look man. great. Thank and, you. Uh, great to yada, see you. Yada, 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 as they say. Sure. Um, can we play a little game? Please. You up for it? Yeah. All yeah. right. Okay. We're going to play a little game. Uh, this game is called Kung Fui. Kung Fui. We were talking about karate. In this mm. episode, Joey Grounds DJ. Uh, from going to her karate tournament. tournament. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you some questions related to karate, Ooh, and I'm going to see how many you get correct. Right. You know what, though? Regardless of what happens, you're still going to win this game. I just know it. I feel mm. it. I feel we'll it. We'll see. We'll see. Challenge okay. accepted. Now Here I'm going to try to lose. Here we go. Here we go. I have five <laughs> questions for you. Yeah. Okay. The first on. one. At the beginning of this episode, DJ enters the kitchen wearing a karate outfit. What's the official name for a karate it's outfit? Like that's a gi. Ding, I'm, ding, I'm ding, ding, in ding. It's done. Oh, man, Come you're on, not going to get one past this yeah. guy. I can tell already. <laughs> okay, here we go. Question two. You're on a roll. Yeah. In karate, you display your status by the color of your belt. What yeah. color was DJ's belt in this episode? Oh, this uh, that's kind of a tough uh, one. Blah, purple? Yes. Nailed yes. it for sure. Unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, but that's a tough one. Nice. You got it, though. Yeah. Question three. Here we go. Steady hands. Not yes. Nervous. Oh, look at that. Slightest. Wax on, wax, wax off. On. Okay, here we go. In the Karate Kid TV uh, spinoff uh -oh. called Cobra Kai, oh. their mantra is something that Uncle Jesse wouldn't like very much. The mantra starts with strike first, strike hard, and then there's two more words sounding somewhat like Uncle Jesse's catchphrase. Do you know what those words are? Oh. Right? Strike hard, strike first, and uh, opposite of yes, no, thyself. <laughs> I don't know what is <laughs> what is no no way. Strike first, <laughs> no. strike first, strike hard. hard. No, mm, no, no, no. No mercy. no mercy. No mercy. No mercy. Of course. It was right oh there. God. You had it. Okay. You Thank totally you. had yes. it. Man, you're on a roll. That's right. three out of four so far. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no here's freebies. Number four. No freebies. Here's that's number right. four. Yes, Two. that's right. No, you got to earn them. Yeah. Uh, in the original Karate Kid movie, Mr. Miyagi has a phrase that explains his teaching method. I'll start it. See if you can finish. Wax, wax on. on, wax off. Ding, oh, ding, 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 ding. Away. <laughs> too easy, too easy. All right, here we go. Here's the, your, here we go for the win, for the sweep. All right. Uh, did karate oh. originate in China, Korea, That's or Japan? That's a really good question. Karate. Because there's a lot of different times, types of martial arts. Mm-hmm. Karate. China, Korea, karate. or Japan? What do you Sounds think? Sounds like, <clears throat> oh gosh. I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go with Japan. I'm Japan for the yes. sweep. Okay. Oh man. Nice. Yes, it's so. Japan. The word karate Could is a combination of two Japanese characters, uh, kara and te, okay. which means empty, and hand. Ah. I didn't know that. Nice. Oh man, but everybody's a winner. You won the game. Nobody goes home empty-handed. You get that jet. You are going home. <laughs> yes, we're, we're firing yes. up the jet right now. And here love you it. go. You win hey. a cut it out t-shirt. There you go. I love Un it. Thanks, man. Unbelievable. Very cool. Uh, now, um, we get to do one more thing before we say goodbye to you. Sure. You've been an amazing guest. Thank um, you. 
But now it's time for the awe, cut it out moment. Cut it out. Every episode of Full House had a heartfelt scene, and we have cut out a scene from season two, episode six. You and I are going to read together. Yep, yep. So there's your script. I'll be Joey. You'll be DJ. Okay. And it's Joey and DJ talking in the girls' room. Okay. Here we go. Cue the music. Okay, good, good, good. There we go. All right, here we go. Joey says, DJ, last night when I didn't know where you were, I was scared to death. If anything ever happened to you... I'm sorry about all those mean things I said to you. I was just mad. Well, that's good because I love you so much. I love you too, Joey. They hug and DJ says... Hey, if it weren't for you, I'd be Farrah Joe Tanner. Ew. They ooh together. Ew. <laughs> it was like yeah. it was a double. That's okay. Uh. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking, Deej? I'm kind of new at this discipline thing. I know that you should be grounded, but maybe grounding you for this weekend was a little unfair. You mean it? I can go to my karate tournament? Ah, what the heck. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are going to make a great dad. Why? Because you got what you wanted? No. Because you were fair. Well, thanks. Now, remember, next weekend, you're grounded. Oh. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's great. That's perfect. Oh, wait. um, I just remembered uh, Kimmy and I had plans to go horseback riding. Joey gives DJ a stern look. You know, I had to try. Okay. They pretend okay. just karate. They pretend to karate fight each other, and that is beautiful. But we now have to say goodbye and thank you to Miko Hughes, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> Here's some of my thoughts about season two, episode six. The awe cut it out scene in this episode has Joey and DJ at odds with each other about DJ's behavior when Danny and Jesse are gone. And Joey is at the house alone being the responsible parent adult. In real life, Candace and I never ever got mad at each other and raised our voices to one another. But in this episode, we did. The ending of the scene more closely parallels our real lives with us in a warm embrace and telling each other how much we love each other. We've said it many times in the media about how much this cast loves each other, but I share a special bond with Candace. I introduced her to her husband, Val Bure, a professional hockey player who played in the NHL for over a decade. And I smile every time I see him together with their three kids. I guess I just had a feeling that Val was the right guy for Candace. That was in 1994. 30 years has gone by in a flash, and I still love her dearly. We'd like to hear your thoughts about Full House. Tell us about your favorite episode or just why you love the show so darn much. Or maybe you got a question for me. Just shoot us a short little video and email us the link to it at socials at podco.us. We close every episode of Full House Rewind by giving all of you who need it a hug. This week, Our hug goes out to all of you who, well, you may be having a disagreement with someone that hasn't been resolved yet. Sometimes we disagree, and that can be really uncomfortable. Disagreements, well, they usually get solved. And sometimes the best way to move forward is the old, let's agree to disagree. So for all of you who are at odds with someone right now, this full house hug goes out to you. Come on, bring it in. Here we go. (laughs) <laughs> All right, that's our show. We'd like to thank our special guest, Miko Hughes, for stopping by. You can join us next time here on Full House Rewind, and you can watch all of our episodes on our Full House Rewind YouTube channel. All right, now take a look at a picture of me, Bob Saget, Candace Cameron, and Lori Lachlan the day we met Candace's future husband, Val Bure, at a charity hockey game in Los Angeles. So long, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Full House Rewind. We'll see you next week.